Okay, fresh after our chat about the rates that stop the nation, uh, time for our fortnightly dose of Australian property chat with our friend and colleague Emma Duffy, editor of Your Investment Property Magazine. G'day, Em. Thanks as always for joining us on the Savings Tip Show. Good to be here again. Thanks for joining us, Emma. Um, so I understand it another month uh, more home price increases. So uh, we're pretty close to the peak and new records, I understand. Yes, so Australians' median house price rose 0.9% last month, um, according to CoreLogic data. This is despite supply increasing across the nation. So all capital cities saw house prices increase last month, except for Darwin, where property prices dropped 0.1%. Um, just uh, CoreLogic's latest house price index found so property values in Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth have now surpassed previous record highs, having gained around 8%, 6% and 11% respectively year on year. Mm. So house values in Sydney are just 2.2% below their January 2022 peak, while Melbourne values are 3.7% below their March 2022 peak. Mm. Uh, Hobart, on the other hand, has quite a way to go yet, with house prices still 11.6% below their peak levels. So the slowdown might continue in the near future, potentially buoyed by what looks likely to be a November cash rate hike, which we know now has yeah. happened. It's so fact, yeah. Yes, so watch this space. Uh, so yeah, there were, uh, there were 12% more new listings rolled out in October across the capital cities than in the same month of 2022. Um, buying activity also appears to have slowed down, suggesting that the market could soon rebalance towards buyers. Um, mm. Consumer sentiment has also slipped in recent times, with Roy Morgan finding it's at its lowest level since early August, and it has remained under 85 um, points for 39 weeks straight, Fifth. which is actually the longest streak since the early 90s. Wow. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that, that figure could worsen now that the RBA has chosen to hike the cash mm. rate today. So, that yeah, so, the opposite. you know, rate rises, oh, you know, naturally, you look at these theories and stuff, you, you'd expect uh, rate rises, particularly, you know, this much, like four, well, 425 basis mm. points yeah. of rate rises that we've seen since uh, since April 2022. Um, you would expect that to, to drive down house prices because usually, you know, rate rises and property price movements tend to, go hand in hand well in in that rate rises drive down property prices yeah um but uh, yeah i guess these experts probably forgot the golden rule that the house always wins uh, it seems <laughs> good well, we'll see you know we'll see obviously we've just seen another rate hike and you know as we chat about has you know maybe this is the the final straw the straw that breaks the camel's back and maybe property will start to come back down. I mean, you already said, uh, M, that uh, CoreLogic was was uh, revealing that things are slowing down a little bit. Because, um, yeah, I mean, rates are predicted to come down, will start coming down late next year. Yeah. So that will definitely have some flow and effect to property prices. But I can't really see prices going anywhere anytime soon. I think that will stay quite elevated for a while mm -hmm. just because there is so much demand and there's just so much buoyancy in the market and it just seems like the property market's just a bit untouchable. Hmm. at the moment so yeah we'll, we'll see but as a hopeful home first home buyer i do hope they calm down sometime soon but yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see or you know hopefully wages catch up enough hmm. that hmm. you know it, it's that a bit more of an down. even playing field like it's you know home prices going down is political suicide and a That'd lot of people cool. are affected by it yeah, and they don't like to see it so, but maybe you know there's yeah. enough unlock supply in the next yeah. few years and wages stay strong maybe but you know, as an editor of an investment property magazine, you know, you, you would kind of hope for your readers the opposite almost. Yeah. Um, so you're it's stuck between two. Yeah, it's a rock and a hard yeah, place. Yeah, a rock and a hard place there. So, um, but what what's the sort of uh, in, in, like information coming in with um, investors selling up? Like anecdotally, like I notice a lot of listings uh, uh, up, it's, uh, especially in townhouse land. You know, you go, yeah. oh, great, there's, there's a new listing there. I'll take a look at it. Oh, it's tenanted until like 2025. Yeah, so, yeah. like, what do you make of that? Yeah, well, vacancy rates are still very, very low, um, at a record low of 0.8%, actually. Mm. I didn't think it could go any lower, yeah. honestly. Just when you think it can't go lower. Like, when it hits 1%, lower, yeah. everyone's like, this is insane. There's vacancy one property 1%. available. And it's just, yeah. keep, it's keeps going. Mad Max. It keeps going down. Mad Max for renters. <laughs> what is going on? It's, um, it's held at a record low, actually, for the second month in a row at 0.8%. 
um, according to Domain's latest vacancy rates report. And yeah, it's a very challenging competitive market for tenants at the moment, especially. Um, I know we've got some people in the team looking for a rental property at the mm-hmm. moment, and it's mm-hmm. just very, very difficult. Um, and this is due to a number of factors, such as o- strong overseas migration. And I am writing an article at the moment for your investment property magazine mm-hmm. about the huge rise of Chinese um, immigration into the country. And a lot of this is actually not, there is a bit of investor immigration, but a lot of it is in uh, Chinese buyers who are looking to settle here and become Australian residents and they want to buy a big property for their families and settle into the market and become permanent residents. So that is taking up a little bit of supply. Um, But there's also higher property prices um, putting pressure um, at a time when properties are very undersupplied at the moment. Mm. I guess when we talk about immigration, like, you know, you know, a lot of people say, okay, well, we, maybe we should turn off the immigration tap. But then at the same time, there's a lot of jobs. To- yeah, we, there's a lot of vacant jobs that, mm-hmm. that need to be filled. But then, so done bringing in more people, um, then, you know, creates more demand for uh, other businesses, which requires more jobs to be, yeah, yeah. like, to be filled as well. And then it's just kind of a, a self... Cycles. Like mm. cycle, it just keeps on making the the other one worse. You know, yeah, like we need more infrastructure, in. and need more yeah. infrastructure, so we roads need and trains to get jobs. Yeah, to fill yeah. those jobs and do that. It's just gonna you're just gonna need more and more people. And you see how you know we are accelerating to like the big Australia what that we've really talked mean? about. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, obviously, Australia is relatively small, like on the global scale, population wise. Mm. So probably we, we've got a lot of room to grow, and we got a lot of room in well, the country. A lot but of then say that like, oh, they look at a, a map of Australia and they see like a huge portion of it's unpopulated mm. but it's unpopulated for a reason because they die out there <laughs> it's so, not, it's, you, yeah but you, you do see you know some quiet country towns that are somewhat livable yeah. well yeah. like we saw that in our chat with uh, lloyd edge uh, a couple of weeks ago he said that more and more investors and and people are looking at sort of bigger country towns that have a bit going for them yeah. that's what he said orange in new south wales which mm. is pretty pretty cute to be honest mm-hmm. um and then albury Rodonga as well on the border of mm. uh, new south wales and vic so those sort of bigger regions um, could offer a lot, especially if you can find a job and live out there. Mm-hmm. Um, it All these rate rises and the lack of supply in the big cities might just cause a huge shift in the way we think about housing and, and whatnot mm-hmm. um, and look to more regional areas and, you know, work from home as well mm-hmm. yeah. um, could change it, could cause a shift rather. Um, so, yeah, well, I, I guess as always time will tell, but um, you've got a dot point here, Em, which kind of piqued my interest. So Queensland Greens threaten landlords again who hike rents. What's what's that all about? Once again, the Greens come out with an unpopular policy for landlords. Who would have thought? <laughs> um, so they've said that they will introduce an effective rent freeze across Brisbane by enacting massive land rate increases for any property investors who increase rents. Ah, I did hear about How that. Do that? The, was this for the council? I think I think I heard this was for the, the council elections. Wasn't it for Brisbane? Yeah, for Brisbane. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they believe that, you know, obviously housing is a lever for broadening its appeal. And I guess for a lot of voters who vote for Greens, um, you know, that is a popular policy. They want to make sure that housing is a bit more fair for renters and a lot of um, the Greens voters would be renters. Um, so they are trying to introduce this policy that would be designed to run for two years and it would require landlords to keep rents at or below January 2023 levels. Yeah. And those who don't subject to a new rates category would be charged 750% of the standard rates bill. Mm. So I can imagine. Council rates, yeah. yeah. This is not going to be it's, a popular you know, policy. Well, often we, you know, we joke about the grants because, like, you know, you can never really see them in power. But yeah. perhaps, you know, in a, in a power-sharing deal with the government, they could have some real power. They do have the balance yeah. of power in well, in the federal um, and pro- perhaps a lot of state governments. Well, I mean, they are in a coalition yeah. in uh, in the ACT, but councils uh, tend to be dominated actually by by Greens, mm, like inner city, especially yeah, Brisbane. inner city council in Sydney yeah. and Melbourne. Brisbane though is like I think it's the by far the largest um, council district in the whole of Australia, mm, more than a million people. So um, perhaps that makes it harder, for, I guess, for the, the the Greens to to be in power when it's not just restricted to people who live within uh, one kilometre radius of the CBD. Yeah. Um, but... Like it, like the fundamental cause of this, especially in Brisbane anyway, is you don't need to get that far out to see that council has only zoned uh, single-family homes pretty close to the city CBD, 
when they could change zoning and um, change it for, you know, mid-level or um, like townhouses or duplexes and so on and so forth. But like they really need to have a look at um, what they call a character home, what they call a heritage listing, mm. yeah. um, and then change zoning, not just punish investors unnecessarily just, like with a yeah. 750%. To abolish bloody. Bluey's beautiful Red Hill house and <laughs> set up Bluey. a big, uh, you know, 50-storey... Metropolis. Complex. Well, it, it doesn't need to be fifty story. Like we've seen, um, like all those character oh, suburbs in Melbourne, for example, they're not fifty story soulless mm-hmm. like Docklands or whatever. Like you look at East Melbourne, they're little like duplexes and mm-hmm. things like that. That adds real character to a home, mm-hmm. to a to a suburb while increasing density. So mm-hmm. it's not one or the other. Um, but yeah, I, I guess uh, you really notice it when you see these like aerial shots of of Brisbane sometimes, and it's. You know, you've got obviously the the, the cluster of um, skyscrapers mm. in the CBD, but just sh- short of that, you, you just see all these little residential quarter acre blocks, mm. and it, it just yeah. looks. I mean, I, when I see those those shots, I'm always quite proud to be, you know, Brisbane night or Queensland. I think, oh, look at that, it looks beautiful. <laughs> but then you also kind of think, well, that no wonder we have issues with uh, our housing supply. supply. Yeah, <laughs> when you've got you know all these these little suburbs that right next to the the CBD and they're, they're, they're huge blocks. Well, that's why Melbourne has 5 million residents, including Geelong. Uh, uh, Brisbane has about 2.5. It's the same land area, roughly, in of what we consider Greater Brisbane and Greater Melbourne. Right. Same land area, but okay. double the population. Yeah. So it's doubly as dense, technically. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yes. I think that's all we have time for, Em. That was a great uh, property wrap. A uh, bit of everything there. Home prices, rents, and uh, legislation. So... Um, yeah, thanks again, Em. Cool. Thanks for having yep. me, guys. And of course, uh, don't forget to sign up for your copy of the Your Investment Property magazine. Uh, we've got the December edition coming out shortly. So as always, all you have to do is visit the uh, Your Investment Property website, click join now and complete a two-minute survey, and uh, you'll get all the exclusive benefits, including the free copies of the digital magazine. Um, and also uh, within that exclusive content, market sentiment reports, research and more. Uh, and you can also participate in member-only surveys um, and, and get the exclusive insights from those surveys too of what other like-minded investors are thinking. So, yes, as always, thank you very much, Emma, Duffy. 